My name is Brenda Blue. I am from Warren, Michigan. I am a part of the family court corruption system. I, uh, my family and I were, uh, my husband and I were currently foster parents slash adopted parents. We were victims of ch uh, child protective services, uh, rubber stamping all of uh, their cases. And um, they came and illegally removed our children be due to a false allegation lodged on our home by our 15-year-old daughter at the time, who was also a victim of family court corruption. She uh, was taken, they were all taken out of our homes. Our boys were re-victimized re in the system. They were um, sexually abused. Um, uh, and we were not notified of any of the service plans, any of, uh, uh, we were kept away from all our, from our children. And uh, we went through nine months of a court system that the judge would never allow us to put anything on record and never allowed us to um, uh, visit with our children, only on the end and they tried to get us to plead no contest and uh, we would not do it because we had not done anything and this whole case boiled down to um, them removing our children illegally. The CPS worker put in her report repeatedly on or about July the 10th that my husband and my daughter had had Sex. However, they never took my daughter to the hospital. I kept repeating to them that um, she needed to be taken to the hospital. They took her 18 days later, and the doctor only asked her questions. My, um, the assistant prosecuting attorney stated she would not take the case. Molly Zap Zapatel stated she would not take the case because my daughter had a credibility problem and my daughter had, um, uh, it, the case had insufficient evidence. We were threatened by the police, the Warren Police Department. We were told that uh, we needed to plea uh, to something. They took the case, they split the case up and um, that is how they, um, uh, do the system. They waive your rights. They um, rubber stamp your case. They um, uh, isolate you from your family. They divide and then they conquer. My daughter was also um, went AWOL. They could not find her for four days. And when she came, uh, when they did find her, she had been molested again and um, uh, um, molested um, and um, they never notified us and told us what had happened and uh, we were also um, trying to um, get, get them to um, tell, tell us exactly what was going on with the service plan and what was going on with the services and things that had been put in place to reunite our family. They um, never bothered to reunite our family. They just tore our family apart. And we were out of over $20,000 um, trying to fight a false allegation that never happened. We ended up getting off of the central registry they took us off, the state of Michigan took us off of central registry. They returned my son back home to me because I told them they needed to fix my home and put my home back the way they found it. They took my, um, when they took my kids out and stuff and I went ahead and I signed over my parental rights because they had taken my daughter and just had turned her so against us. And I found out through a court hearing um, in uh, August 11th 
um, one of the Orchard Children's Services uh, supervisor, adoption supervisor, took the stand under oath and said that my, she read a letter, th that her friend read a letter that my daughter had recanted her story and wanted to come back home and nobody even bothered to tell us that that had happened. But in the meantime, I had told them to please watch my boys and they never bothered to watch my boys. They just went ahead and um, let my, mix my boys up with all those um, other kids in residential setting. And my boys, um, I had to go back. After I got my boys back, I went ahead and um, fostered my other son. And I went ahead and adopted him in August uh, 2011. And I had to take both boys because it was so severe, they had to have sexual abuse therapy. In the meantime, um, I could have had my daughter in sexual abuse therapy. However, the state of Michigan is setting foster parents and adopted parents up for failure because they are putting kids in your home and they are not telling you that the kids have been uh, molested. They're, instead, they are putting the kids in your home, they're hiding all of that from you, and then when you get an allegation, a false allegation on your home, they're putting it on the families. They're saying, like, if you have, like, an uncle, if you have, like, a, a, a grandpa, if you have, like, a, um, a dad or a husband or a son, they're putting the false allegation. They're saying that that person, your family member, your loved one is doing that to the child when, and they had this information. And I said this to, um, um, state Senator Steve Beter. I talked to him about my case. He saw my case and he said that they knew better th than what they were doing. He said that, um, he's, he's an attorney and he looked at the case and he said that, um, he stated that uh, they knew in, in, my, um, in the medical records and stuff, they saw all of this documentation and they had access to this and they knew better than what they were doing. And um, I've also um, wrote a letter to um, the President of the United States. It was given to Hilda Solis, the Secretary of Labor, and she handed it to President Barack Obama, and I know she gave it to him because she gave me, a, uh, she sent me back an email stating that she had given it to him. I have given um, my information on how to clean up, help clean up and revamp the whole CPS uh, system. I know not only came with a problem, I came with solutions. I also would like to um, as uh, all of you officials, all of you government and, uh, and state officials to help um, uh, all the children. This is not about us. This is about the children. And no one signs up in, the, uh, in child protective, I mean, in um, the child um, uh, uh, adoption system. Uh, nor the foster care system to go to jail. But if you are not careful, that is exactly where you are headed because they are setting up innocent people to go to jail. Um, I would like for everybody to join in in helping us get this system revamped and re, uh, uh, I'm not saying that CPS is not needed, but uh, people need to go to jail. That uh, talking about you're going to fire them. I know that Rick Snyder is talking about firing people if they make false allegations. Well, this is perjury. This is fraud. Everybody needs, they need to go to jail. That's just the bottom line uh, because we were on our way to jail had we had not fought them and said, no, this is wrong. Um, you are t trying to take down innocent people that love these kids and are doing the very best that they can for these kids because these kids uh, uh, were taken away from their mother and their family who they bonded with in the womb. 
and it did not matter what their mother and father did. It only mattered that these kids needed a home, a loving home, and a stable home. And if you um, join the foster and the adopted parents in trying to make a, a, a success of that, then you would not, you, instead of trying to get false allegations on, on them and trying to take them to jail behind innocent things, if we were such bad people, how did we end up getting all of our kids, uh, all our kids back minus our daughter because we had to sign her away because we were afraid that the Warren Police Department and CPS would put something negative in her and tell her to come in and set us up and we would be right back in that system again. So we had to outweigh do we take the two boys back or do we take our daughter and the two boys back? So we had to sign our parental rights away. And that was one of the hardest decisions that we ever had to uh, make. They made us sign our uh, rights away and they put on the form that we had counseling. Well, we did not have any counseling. No uh, counseling was done. No uh, um you know, no therapy, no nothing. We just had to do that. And our daughter is still to this day trying to be a friend to us on Facebook, but we are afraid because of we, you know, we, we don't know if the state of Michigan is pushing her to do this. We don't know it because once you get caught up in this system, they do not leave you alone. They come after you all kind of ways. They go all the way back and they uh, uh, take you and um, they go back through your history and they go through everything. My right. Now, you, uh, Brenda, you had mentioned something about faulty evidence uh, that they were using against your husband. Could you elaborate a little bit more about that? Well, my uh, daughter ran off that day on, on July the 10th, 2008. She ran off and they took, uh, she went, ran off to a neighbor's house who took her to the police station nine hours later while everybody was uh, all over the uh, neighborhood looking for her. After she went to the police station, the first thing that should have been done is a rape and trauma team uh, brought in. However, they took her to a residential home. They came over the Warren Police Department and took my two boys out of there and they took them to a residential setting. And I kept demanding as to if you're saying that my daughter had sex, she didn't that day, she did not have sex with my husband. So who did she have sex with? She had a condom and a sex toy with a, a pubic hair on it. And I said, good to the police officers, the judge and e the referee and everybody because if she has this kind of evidence, then I want to test it so we can eliminate my husband and we can uh, instead go on about our business and, and be left alone. Instead, they chose to take the evidence and say, well, she loaned her purse out to uh, a friend. And I said, well, if she loaned her purse out to a friend, then I still want the evidence tested because you're saying that th that my husband had sex with her and she didn't have sex with him. Who did she have sex with? They refused to test the evidence. And this is the, the continuous, uh, this is how they um, get you caught up in this system and turn around and waive your rights and split the case up where they make it, they, they put child abuse on one side and neglect on one side, and then they turn around and put criminal um, uh, sexual abuse on the other side. 
However, we kept fighting them, and they said we were, uh, they were, we were told by the Warren Police Department that they would hold this over our heads for seven years. And I told them, there is no way you will hold this over my head because it didn't happen, and I'm sick of your manufactured evidence. How did you feel about this when you had these accusations made against you and all of a sudden you're finding your family being torn apart? I was very upset. However, I knew that there was something going on that was out of my control. So one of the things that I did was, one, to, was to remain calm, and then to try to find out why this is happening. And then any time an allegation is made of a sexual, of a sexual nature against a, against a man, usually society is anticipating that that is true. But when they find out all the evidence comes to the table, then they look and they see all these things that are manufactured and not true. It's too late to change because one of the things you've done is you have far waste and stupidity that you've wasted on trying to ruin a person's life and career. I'm a military person. I defended this country for over 20 years. I've trained men and women how to survive in combat and I come here and now I'm working with a young lady and, and, and a young man in our home, my son and daughter, who now have to learn how to fight in a different nature. And that's just trying to survive and make a difference in the world. And then when someone manufactures, manufactures evidence like that against me, I'm deeply, I'm deeply saddened because now they have no proof and then they say the things that were used, the condom and the sex toy, the pubic hair, now it's in somebody's purse, and now you can't use that. But now you want to use different levels of, of different sexual allocation levels to say, well, I believe that this could have happened. That kind of anticipation makes a person like me feel I have one thing left, and that's to destroy you, because that's what you've done to me. So here I am now, I had to live with the thought of what people would say, maybe it did or maybe it didn't. Well, if you had to keep your mouth shut and took a look at the evidence that you manufactured, we would not have had any of these problems at all. So here it is now, a young lady is trying to have her way, our daughter. It didn't happen. Young ladies and young men, they do those kind of things. And we as adults need to take a look, step back, take a look at the evidence and the things that are surrounding the child's life and say, you know what, there's no history of this family doing anything like this. And look at what they've done for the state of Michigan. They're taking kids who have nothing, bring them into an environment where they can be reached. Our goal and our objective in life is to reach in the hearts and minds of young men and women and try to help them and develop them to be better than what they could be. And what you do is you slam our hand right in the door and say, this could have happened. And then when you find out it didn't, you don't come back and say, I'm sorry about what happened. We were wrong. You think it's going to be like another day where well, you're wrong because you never underestimate the power of the pen. And I will write from here until you know what freezes over to let everyone know the stupidity, the fraud, waste, the abuse, and the ignorance that you displayed in your professional career to ruin someone who tried to make a difference. The people that were instrumental in taking our family and destroying, trying to destroy our lives were Judge Tracy Jokic of um, Macomb County District Court, um, Detective uh, uh, Conan of Warren Police Department, Don Napier of Child Protective Services, who illegally removed our kids behind a false allegation, uh, Crystal Magnum Shaw, Angela Smalliser, her supervisor, Adam Baker was the supervisor on duty that did the rubber stamping, and uh, a host of other DHS workers um, were instrumental in taking the children out of our home illegally. Uh, these people are, I do not want these people to lose their jobs. 
I think these people should be prosecuted. Because once they knew that this was a lie, what department do you go to to get your name back? What department do you go to to get, um, uh, you know, your family back and stuff? It is only through God's amazing grace that we were able to put our family back together. But think of all the thousands of homes, all the thousands of kids that you have ruined and that you have taken illegally because you have taken a lot of children illegally. And I'm just saddened that this is, has been allowed to go on for years. And I was a part of this system where I watch them bring innocent children in there, one in their mother, one in their family uh, members and stuff, and one in their loved ones. And we were a, a part of this system, and that's why we were able to, um, you know, be better uh, able to know exactly what was going on. Little did I know that this was happening to thousands and thousands of other families. They just did our adoption. Oh, is that right? Uh -huh. oh. But we were a part of Vista Maria agency, and that's corrupt, too. The, the uh, Orchard uh, Child and Family Services, they handled the adoption for our son, uh, DeAnthony Frazier. And when we were put on a central registry, that is when you commit a crime and uh, the system never wants you to get involved with raising or rearing any children at, children at all. However, we were on the central registry because of the allegations that were made. And I would like to use the term, we were immediately removed when there were no evidence or no basis to put us on there in the first place. So to be on it, and I'll use this analogy here, for 20 seconds and then to be off of it five seconds later, that says something right there. You don't get put on the central registry for just a few moments. Well, probably about 30 days or so, but I'm using that analogy because it's really s silly to have wasted our time that we can't get back. That's part of our life and stress that you can't just say flip a switch and everything is back to normal. We'll never be back to normal again. Once you put us on the central registry, you have almost ruined our life. And it's only because they were decent people and there's no basis for this, we were able to be removed. My wife and I on a central registry, how dare the system do something so incredibly stupid and then say that it's okay. The central registry is a, is a good place to put people if you do something wrong. But prove it. Don't just throw somebody out there on that. That's not the kind of thing you want. And when I'm looking for another career, or to enhance my opportunity in the United States of America, a country that I lived and, 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 and served. And they take a look at my history because I'm going to have bragging rights. I work with foster care. Check me out. And I'm on the central registry for what? Oh, it's okay. Uh, they're going to say we're going to blot that out, that there was no basis for that. Well, they shouldn't have put me on it in the first place. There's the basis for that. It's called ignorant stupidity. And you don't need to be losing your job. You need to be put in jail. Because wh where are you going to take in the minds of people who want to look at me or evaluate me? You put central registry down, and what do they think? Immediately, they say, this guy, he was on central registry. Maybe, maybe. There's no maybe to that. Didn't do it, and you shouldn't have done it. So let's put you on the central registry for what you've done and then see how well your life is. Also, I would like to add that the central registry is unconstitutional. The central registry is designed for them to make money. Immediately, you go on the central registry when you get a false allegation. That is so they can get money on how many people that they put on the central registry, they get a reimbursement behind that. Also, the central registry is used as a bully, bullying uh, tactic. Uh, to me, it's used to destroy people. Why would you put anyone on the central registry when they have not been able to prove their case yet? 
You don't know if that person is innocent or guilty. However, you put them on the central registry and said, hey, I'm going to destroy you for the rest of your life. You cannot participate in any of your children's activities at school, and it should be outlawed. You go on there with sexual abusers and things like that, and you have not been proven guilty behind anything. People are fighting now, years later, to get off the central registry but behind false allegations. Give up your daughter as a bargaining chip, uh, it sounds like, mm -hmm. That's to exactly. stay out of the system. That's it. And, uh, that, and to, what it's like to have fear of becoming a friend of your daughter's on Facebook because you don't know if she's being used as a tool of manipulation against you. She is. Well, we have to take a look, and what I always think about is money has been wasted. And once you start attacking money in any, in any caliber, people take a look at that. And so far wasted abuse and stupidity has failed. It did not capture us in that system. So now, how long is it going to take for someone to try to do a oops on us? We're not going to let it happen. It hurts me because every father who has a daughter knows you want to make sure that you educate her, train her, and help her to be the very best she can be and to be a standalone. Because at some point, something's going to happen in her life, and you want her to be able to say, oh, got a problem. That's not a problem. I'll just go ahead and go to the next step, step of my life and be better than what I could be. And you won't sit there, waddle, and be upset and stressed and do something that's not going to be conducive in your life. Every father's dream is to have a daughter that does all the right things. I know my daughter's going to be fine because I've trained her. She can build things. Uh, she can cook. She can go out and change a tire. And if something does happen, I know she'll have the mindset and the scruples to make a difference and not to be hampered down by problems. And also, yes, that's still our daughter. You destroyed her. You destroyed her, her uh, tried to destroy her family, and you just tried to destroy her brothers. However, she is still our daughter. We will always claim her. Listen to me, state of Michigan. We will always claim her. We will always be in your face and let you know that you did what you did, but you did not win. The devil has been defeated. You are liars. You have ruined, tried to ruin families. You have done things that, that are immoral and illegal, and your day is coming. Your day is coming. My, my quest in life is this. Anyone who gets involved in reaching into the hearts and minds of America's future, I'm going to make doggone well that I share with them. Never give up. Set your sights on what you feel is important and never stop, no matter what. We don't give in to anything. We'll stand for what's right.